We've been looking at, at hail injury with uh, the National Crop Insurance um, Company for probably 10, 12 years now. And as I was saying, we aren't in Hale Alley or Colorado, Wyoming, New Mexico area, but um, we, we do, in comparison to Colorado, it's supposed to be one of those big states um, to get hail, we actually get more hail injury to crops than Colorado. So, um, and on, on average, we probably have uh, about 3% um, crop injury where Colorado maybe will go and, and it's much lower. So if, if you're thinking of it, actually sometimes we have at least 50 some hail events on statewide basis, on an annual basis. And so with the, the amount of crops, it's pretty understandable why, why we would get hail injury. So in this study, you know, for the longest time we've been looking at what happens when you get one hail injury. And we're looking at, okay, different degree of injury, everything from we, we just wipe it all off to 25%. Um, and we're looking at different timings, tuber initiation, um, early bulking, late bulking. And we found out that really when you get some of that severe hail, that early bulking time was the most important. And, and then the more severe, the more um, lack of return that you're going to get, the more reduction in your yield that you're going to see. And, and that makes sense. But what we really saw up in North Dakota is that the weather after that hail event is really important. Because if we get a cool day like this after a hail event and, and it stays kind of cool like this, those potatoes can recover. If we don't, and that soil really heats up, because the, the leaves and stems after a hail event, it doesn't take long for that all to dry up. And if it gets hot and that soil starts to get really warm, then you're going to at least double your yield reduction just because of how, how stressful that is on those potatoes after they're trying to regrow. But anyway, uh, a few years ago, Mark um, Zarnstroff went and said, you know, we're getting a lot of questions about what happens if hail happens twice? You know, like lightning hits twice and he goes, you know, we have no data on this. And so that's how we initiated this study. So we had, it was supposed, it started off with only Clearwater versus Russet Burbank. And then one year we couldn't get Clearwater, so we used Umatilla. And so in order to go and really complete the cycle, this year we have all three of them in here. And we're looking at either 50% or 100% defoliation. And I, I wish my uh, research specialist, Colin Allwater, was here because he's the one doing all this defoliation. And boy, when you get to that 100%, there is green guck flying everywhere. He puts on a spray suit and has a hood and everything. And you just, when he gets done, he just looks like the green monster, the jolly green giant maybe. Um, but we had a slight problem with some female CBD hemp that decided with the heat they wanted to become male <laughs> and so he's off harvesting so that we don't go and ruin some other uh, trials but in this trial so we've looked at 50 and 100 percent and we've looked at three different timings either at tuber in it well actually four tuber initiation end of tuber initiation um, early bulking and let me get the last mid bulking and so the early bulking if you see like that spot there that's um what happened with the that's 100 percent defoliation at mid early bulking that was on august 17th and so we're going to come through with the mid bulking here um supposed to be yeah it'll be next week 
to go in and do that 50 or 100 percent. What we found in the past is Clearwater isn't acting like Russet Burbank. When we put that stress of 100 percent defoliation onto Clearwater, no matter what the timing is, it starts, um, its recovery consists of reducing the tubers, the number of tubers, as well as the size of tubers. Russet Burbank, on the other hand, when we put on that, that really bad 100% defoliation, no matter what that timing is again, what it does is it keeps the number of tubers, but it just reduces its size. So clear water is acting more like some of our early season or a red with hail instead of more like um, the russet Burbank. And Umatilla, uh, we haven't really seen, we, we only have, this will be the second year that we have Umatilla, so I think it's a little premature to go, go and talk about Umatilla. What we also found is that no matter, no matter what kind of weather we have, after we go and have 100% defoliation two times, you will not get marketable tubers. You'll get some tubers, but they're all four ounces or less. Um, and, and so I called it the double whammy, and it sure does. Um, it just, the potatoes try so hard after that first defoliation to go and regrow that engine so it can go and, and start putting down those photosynthates back down into those tubers. And when you hit it again, it just, it can't do it. And so it tries, it again, converts what it's going to put down into those tubers into top growth. And you just, here we'll, we'll run out of season for that ever to happen um, with Russet Burbank. Maybe in Washington, they could get uh, away with that because they have a much longer season, but here we can't. Mm -hmm.